welcome to the next episode of Language Talks. I'm glad to share with you all that we are recording the 100th episode of Language Talks today. Thank you for all your love and support. We have with us today a literature and culture consultant, a translator, writer, a ghost writer, moderator, and a mindfulness consultant. A person wearing many hats, she is Hen from Dubai. Hi, Hen. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much, I mean, for having me on your 100th episode. <laughs> yes, That's it, feels, it feels great, yes. Thank you. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you very much. What languages do you translate and uh, how did you become proficient in them? I translate from English to Arabic or from Arabic to English, both of them. Uh, well, you know, I think it's it's reading. Uh, as I said, I read from young age. I read everything, you know, that's come on my way. Like, I love literature, but I read also like nonfiction, fiction, uh, information. And, and I think that's helped because when you know a lot of things, it helps when you translate because translation is, as you know, is not just translating the book. You have to have the knowledge uh, of everything when you translate. And so I, sometimes I get books, let's say from English to Arabic and some like um, sentences or some like saying, which I don't understand. So I have to go and read about it and understand the concept of it and then move it to Arabic. So I think it's mainly you need to read uh, a lot and to have um, knowledge also, not just reading literature, but to have knowledge of so many things, yeah. Yeah, right. You are highlighting the importance of reading, I think. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah, I mean, reading yeah. is not uh -huh. just, I think some, some uh, also people say, you know, you need to read a lot of uh, fiction books to translate fiction, uh, for example. But I think it's not only reading fiction, it's reading other books, you know, uh, as I said, for knowledge, because um, especially when you translate it from English to Arabic or Arabic to English, there is a really big gap in culture. And, and that's uh, the important of translation is to, to move the culture in a right way, to understand the culture before you move it. In. So from Arabic, I find it is more easier for me because I understand the culture. I know every aspect of the culture. Even sometimes when you I translate, as you know, the Arab countries are a bit different. Even like we have one language, but the culture is different. Right. Sometimes you, I need to read more about this one concept in, let's say, Morocco and understand that uh, concept in their own way before translating it. Yeah. I would like to start by asking you, uh, you have been trained in translation in the Arabic language. So were you always interested in the translation area? Yes, I'm, I'm always interested in translation and I used to read books, I mean Arabic books, English books since I was very young and this interest came because I wanted to, I felt like there are some things in other culture I would like to know uh, to move it to the Arabic culture and also the same from Arabic culture to move it to, to like other cultures and that's where, where I started uh, my interest, then I studied translation. Basically, translation, we learned about moving from Arabic to English or English to Arabic, both languages at that time, yeah. I see. That is interesting. That's an interesting <laughs> thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are some challenges that you face while translating, especially literature? Well, literature, yes, we do have a lot of challenges in literature uh, because it's it's also the same idea is is movie like translation is you need not to translate and is to move it to the other culture so they understand at the same time you keep it the keep the concept of it and sometimes in the arabic in literature it's very difficult to um translate i translated um a while ago a, is a song, an Iraqi song. They usually uh, sing it in weddings. You know, it's an old tradition song. I see. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, it was very difficult, it was very challenging because uh, it's even if you say it in English, there is no meaning for it. You know, there is like, okay, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Uh, so we have to write something about it, especially with song. You can actually write, you know, explain the, the background of it. 
but sometimes also with um with books like with stories it's it's harder uh because like some sayings uh, is very hard to translate and then sometimes you need to find something in the similar uh, culture and how they understand it but i think now recently as we go by as technology now advanced and people know understand other culture easier because of all the like social media and all these things sometimes right. like like some words, you know, in Arabic, we keep it as it is in Arabic because I think it's become uh, popular. Like you know, marhaba, salam alaikum, all these things that oh, yes. you know, it's 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 known now. So we don't need to translate it really. Yeah, that's right. Marhaba and uh, shukran, they are very popular. Okay. Yes. I mean, let's see, can you can put it, but I mean, I also we had once like um, also mm -hmm. with the story, there is a kind of poetry, but it's an old poetry mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was very hard. It was really challenging and uh, even translated. I think some translator, what they do, they put notes, you know, on, on the book, but I don't prefer that. I feel like, you know, you you break the story, especially with literature. It's it's very hard. I mean, with nonfiction, maybe you can explain, but with fiction, it's just kind of lost the interest, I think, of the story. The reader will lose the interest <laughs> when they start reading notes uh, on something. Yeah. But I think you need to do it within the, within the context, you know, so they understand it within the context, even if they don't understand what it is, this words or this sentence, but they can understand it within the context and then they will understand the whole thing on that okay yeah right so my next question was about uh, the same how do you maintain the originality of the text source text when you move it or bring it into the target language yeah well you i mean I, I, for me translation is as you saw, i think you need to be in in the mind of the of the writer of the character so you think so when when I first translated, I think, you know, in the let's say from Arabic in Arabic. So I translated. But then in the same, it's a very I think it's something that's happening in your mind when you are a translator, you know. And then you move to the English mind and things, but then again, you want you have this other person there and then tell you this is the culture concept of it. So I think it's something process happening inside, which is I don't really know how it works, but I feel like a, when I read it in English, uh, as an English speaker, I would understand it. When I read, you know, so I understand it in okay. Arabic fully and then I transfer it. So it's like, it's more a transfer, you know, and I think every translator, you you are in that language and then you move slowly into the other language, but keeping the culture, the concept of that. So it's it's a very, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I don't think you can explain it to anyone because it's happening in your mind how the transfer happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. It happens automatically. It's happened automatically, in your mind. yes. Yes, I right. think... Uh, a while you know when you practice you know how it works and mm -hmm. it just yeah yeah definitely and you are also a ghost writer <clears throat> so how do you approach your writing as a ghost writer well uh, ghost writer i think is ghost writer is basically it's half writer of that book you know you because uh you you know the story you get the story and then uh with ghost writing i want to know more about the writer the original writer who wants to write the book and usually it's not only receiving the story or like hearing it from him it's always like um also like uh, interviews you know and when you interview person and they talk about their story you understand from their body language from these clues that you know verbal clues more about how they relate to that story so it's it's a combination it's the story is the person is uh, how they relate to the story and what is mean to them also all these things comes up to into the story because you are writing for someone else you're not writing it's not your voice, it's someone else's voice. And then you need to bring uh, that person into that book also, yes. So it's it's also an, another process that uh, it needs to place. I think people don't understand when 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 they do ghostwriting, it's like, okay, you get it, you get the information, you write the book. 
but it's it's you need to write it in their other person voice it's not how you want to write it is how they want to write it yeah yeah but i find this really challenging because our thoughts uh, i mean the writer's thoughts can sometimes interfere with the uh, original the other person's thoughts does that yes. happen Yes, it tells. It does happen. It does happen a lot. Yes, it is very difficult. It is, and I think it's it's need practice. You know, you need to practice because automatically, as you said, you go into your mind and you say, "Okay, I know I want to do this." No, that's like I don't. You know, it's not even like in the beginning, it's like you want to change the story because this is not the right thing. But it just I think practice and also remembering this is this is how they want it, this is what they want, and this is how they think. And uh, I think it's as translation is you are you go into their mind, you know, you be them. And as you know, as translator or writer is is you have to be in that personality when you write. You have to be in that uh, place when you write or you translate, so you can you can do it. And and you know talking about it now, I think it's it's a very um, it's a very challenging and it's very uh, difficult things to do. And uh, and and now I feel like a lot of people becoming translator, and you see some translation books which are doesn't have the um, the soul of the translation. You know, it was very things. And I think because uh, wow. so many translation, they feel like okay, I have I can translate. I know the language. I can translate. But it's not, it's not like that, you know. I um with the ghostwriting also, like both of these I do research sometimes. Like I had a, a, a translation to do with the story, and there's a place I didn't know about. So I had to read about this place and I know the place. So I can imagine that what's written is right. With the ghostwriting, the same. If they talk about subject, you need to know more about the subject. And sometimes maybe they have, you know, uh they have wrong information or they have wrong wrong you know details so yeah i mean it's 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 a very deep work it's not just you know putting words <laughs> on the paper and changing it from one language yeah. to another and you know that yeah. i'm sure you know that understand that yeah uh, yeah i'm sure it, it's a it must be a complex process <laughs> it is it is yes mm -hmm. yeah right but as you say, so, it's happening in our mind. Yeah. So that's people, it's not like something uh, you have to write it. It's something you have in your mind. And that's where I think uh, people don't understand it because there's no process in papers. It's it's in, in here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Can you share any experience of ghostwriting which you enjoyed the most? Well, uh, I actually had... Um, it was like a small, a small uh, um, article or more than article. Actually, a person wanted to write about their their experience and trouble, uh, but they didn't know how to express it uh, really in a, a nice way. And it was a very interesting journey to go with this person, you know, with their trouble. And I see. Uh, yeah, and it's it's I struggled with this because. Uh, um, she was not saying a lot, you know, she uh, as and uh, that's why I think she didn't write it herself, because um, when you want to write, you want the, all these small details. So I need to take I had to take these details from her. But it's it was beautiful things to come at the end, you know, uh, and this experience was was great. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And I also read about these places, which, which was really nice to know also. I see. Mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah oh that is great thank you for sharing and i would like to hear about your experience as arabic uh, program manager at the emirates literature festival that well, is really interesting yes it is i mean uh, it's even like you know i i used to work in a corporate for a long time and i love literature love translation i used to work translation on the side on things and and I loved the, the festival. I always go to the festival uh, before that. And I was like, okay, I wish I work in the festival, you know, it's like, and it happened. <laughs> and 
it was a great, great experience, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. yes, I was Arabic program manager, but in the same time, I was exposed to literature from all around the world, you know, and that was the amazing things. And you learn about all this uh, literature and all these cultures. And the most, most things I loved in that is when we combine writers from all over the world. Like with Arabic, you know, we combine writers, they say, from India, from England, from Europe, and all these things. And you have, you find there are so many issues are the same issues mm -hmm. those writers are writing about, you know. So okay. you see that's all the similarity between the issues that writers write, you know, and how they write each one, how they write about it. So these sessions was really amazing sessions for me. I mean, and, and reading about it and finding which, com you know, which one you can put with which one and you, you bring them all together in one session. That was really great. And also bring that to the audience, you know, and learning. So this the audience comes, they not learn only about the Arabic culture, but they learn about the Indian and the, like the European one in the same time. And that was really, was really amazing. And discovering so many writers from all around the world and what they write, uh, what the trends happening, what the, what the subject is most written at that time. And that's that's really was um, those amazing things. I mean, I'm still follow their work. I go to the festival every year. I also do moderating with them every year, do moderate sessions uh, with them. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, to keep, you know, to keep learning about the the new literature and what's happening. Yeah, that is great. That must be a great experience to see so many authors and so much literature around you. Yes, it was it was great, really. I mean, like some literature I never read about, you know, like from South America and all like, uh, you know, the Asia ones. And it was I was introduced to all these literature and, uh, you know, it was it was great. And I think festivals, as you said, it's a great place to know, to learn more and being part of it and helping, you know, to combine these cultures and literature. That was that was that was amazing. And and you know getting and also for authors because especially for arabic uh, literature was not really known a lot in, in around the world and we have amazing writers we have amazing books but it was not really um introduced to the worldwide and this literature helped us to introduce Arabic writers to the world and to you know what they're writing about and what their issues especially women writers also and and that was was a great thing I see a lot of foreigner coming because we do um, translation also we do like interpreting in the sessions so that helped to introduce Arabic literature to the world in the same time. Oh, this is amazing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, get, uh, the literature getting introduced to the world is really nice. So, and I think uh, the literature festivals are very important and vital for uh, books and readers also. I think they are. They are very, very important, mm -hmm. really. Uh, because, I mean, as you said, in the festivals, you go in as if you moved around the world, you know, as if you traveled all these countries and you met all these writers from all around the world while you are in your place. And, and that's the beauty of it. And also sometimes you can see different writers in one session and you can understand, you can understand this writer, you know, who, where it came from like European country or from India and this writer Arabic and you see, okay, the, we are similar. And that's another thing, you know, you feel like, you know, even like we have a different values in life, but we are very similar. We have so many like values or the same values, you know, the same way. And I think that's also help in understanding others, help to accepting others, you know, and that's that's really amazing things because with writers especially with literature um you always learn about those people about their lives about their like uh, very special things in their life and this also so it's not about the literature only it's about uh understanding the other you know accepting the other being um you know tolerate these these things all yeah i mm -hmm. also worked as a, a consecutive translator in in the cooking section in one of the festivals in uh, in Sharjah festival and that was oh, really interesting 
<laughs> that is more interesting <laughs> because it's with food, you know, food is the main thing that you connect to people. And also that's where you find there is similarity, you know, and you find, oh God, this, we are so similar in so many things. And that we took from that culture a certain, you know, spices or something and we took from that culture and then now we're using it and it's 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 beautiful things to do really uh, through food you connect to people and uh, start people start the audience start asking questions to the chef you know how that came and what what's happening and all these stories and you ended up like not only about cooking but you ended up to learn more about the country the culture and how this you know food came and what is the importance of that food also wow well, this is interesting yeah. <laughs> it is very interesting actually uh is a uh, is hesitated when I first got the job and it was like you know cooking and then, but it became more than cooking it was not cooking actually the cooking was a side things because it's more about how this like you know um, especially like when you have some uh, uh, some chefs were like I, we had a chef like she's Indian but she lives in UK and she how she changed things you know see she kept the, the Indian spices but then she changed it so there's also you know the combining of cultures also in, in that uh, it's it's changing so we know that the world is changing we are changing you know so before like you have your culture you stick to it now you bring it and you combine it with other culture and and how that um you know it's working it's it's really working because you're not losing it but you adding to to the new one yes and uh, what skills do you think are essential for a language professional especially when you're doing uh, many things like uh, writing editing moderating translating yes well i think i think uh, like everyone say is is reading is knowledge knowledge i mean uh, you have to have knowledge i mean i read all the time like everything i read you know and it's it's the knowledge because each job needs something from you and definitely reading literature that's also help you to know what's what's new in the literature what's people writing and uh, what's happening for 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 the arabic like say when when we do like uh, consultancy and we do moderating for arabic we still uh, we still like you know I think now people want to write more about some issues like I think when you find in the um, foreign like in, in the English uh, literature mm -hmm. you have different kind of books that you know commercial books like more like serious books and all that but we still um, so learning that about the other you know literature also how to bring it to the Arabic because we still like progressing in these in these uh, fields uh, and that's why I think it's it's uh, more about reading, also understanding the language, you know, learning the language, be proficient on the language. That's that's also very good, important things. I also do like the consulting when I do like the assessment of, uh, of books. Okay. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's they are good to be published or they good to uh, to be translated. And that's also when I get to, to the point I need. To, I read the books and also uh, investigate if there's everything, you know, especially as you say, you know, places, things that happened, uh, some facts, if they are really, you know, correct facts or that. And um, and also like if they are suitable for other readers, you know, like some books, I mean, some books, I'm not saying they're not good for translation, is that they will yeah. not... Mm -hmm. They will not add to the other writer to the readers you oh. know so mm -hmm. that is very important because you can translate all the books but but will that book be interested to you i mean if something if it's a just general um issue that you have it in your culture there is no difference in it you know and uh, you're not adding to your knowledge about it it's it can be translated but it's not going to be welcomed by other culture because i think when you read um another book from other culture you want to learn something about that you want to know what is the difference right. yeah. i'm not you like there is a family and living and they doing all the things that normal family do you need something extra so it, it's it's knowledge is general knowledge is the knowledge of the language definitely is the knowledge of 
what's happening in the literature uh, field. Uh, so basically, these these all these things and. And, and sometimes even that, you know, uh, as you say, sometimes your own value, your own thinking interfere with that also. And that's where it's something you need to be separate yourself from what is it's, it's there. That's also another thing. Yeah. I think being a culture consultant also must be helping you in uh, this field, in the literary field. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, yes, because mm -hmm. look, I lived in so many places, you know, and mm -hmm. whenever I go and live in place, I really love to understand the culture. So I, I moved from, I, I'm originally from Iraq and I lived in, in Jordan for a while. I lived in Yemen, which I love their culture. And I lived in New Zealand and I lived in Australia and I love living now in Dubai. So, I mean, uh, everywhere I, I love culture. So I first mm -hmm. thing I recall, country I learn more about them the culture visit all these old places and learn about it and that's uh, that's also helps I mean traveling and seeing the world and also living there it's also helped to link and the culture and how uh, the dynamic of the culture work and how that you know you can you can work it uh, in literature in in writing yes I want to ask you about uh, your uh, writing and editing for children's teacher. Yes. So this must be challenging also and interesting also. So how do you find it? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I'm interested mm -hmm. in children, especially after I worked also on the festival. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's because uh, sometimes I think there's so many books for children. And what is people struggle to find the right books. Sometimes you struggle to find the right books. And at the end of my work at the festival, I read so many books, you know, so many books. And that's when I got interested. So I do editing. I do also translation for children books. And um, it's children because children books, you know, you have like 600 words or 1,000 words and you have to give the, you know, to to bring in the um the for it, uh, the subject, the whole thing in a very, very short uh, place. Uh, and that's that's very, very challenging to do and how you, you need to remove a lot of things, uh, uh, words and sentences to make it nicer. I had to write, I worked in, a, I commissioned for, for a job to write um, like stories from the culture on a certain places for one of the countries and was really, really challenging also because you write, you have the place and you have to write about it, the place, but in a children's voice and how, and you need um, to keep the culture and you need to teach them the culture and you need to teach them what's the value of these. And it was a bit challenging um, because we have to write it in a very like short story, very short story. So yeah, I mean, it's. It, I think for children, you need more work, you need more time, uh, and you need to observe it and leave it and come back to it. And then, you know, you say, okay, no, this is not right. And this is, we need to remove the words. So it's more and more challenging. <laughs> yes, definitely more challenging. And some people think it's easy to write. I mean, it's a short story, you write it, it's not many words, but it's more difficult because each word you write, it has to give something to the book. Um, is you don't have a space to write more words and and you know give the same meaning yeah yeah <laughs> it is, and it is. Also... sorry yeah no it is um actually I translated also a a, mm -hmm. a book recently which is was very interesting so I received the book in I English. See. And I um, I found the English was not very right, you know, was written, uh, it was written by someone not their first language. Uh, and it was written in that language, but in English, you know what I mean? It's just not the English. So, uh, and and the writer was a bit upset when I said, you know, you need to, to change it because, um, yes, I can translate it into Arabic, but it's not the right English, you know. And that's also uh, some people don't understand it. And I think the writer didn't understand the English culture in using some sentences and some words, uh, you know, some certain ways of using it. And then we did, he agreed to do the editing for it and then we translate it. So it's, we also need to know the culture okay. if you want in another language, especially. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, highlighting the importance of culture is very important. 
Yes. When yeah. you are style, when you are working in the literature field. <laughs> Yes, because people think like, oh, I write in my way and they will understand it. But it's not, it's not. It's just, you know, you need to write it in their mind way, you know, in their way of thinking, not in your way of thinking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You're also moderating a children's podcast, I think. Right? Yes. Yes. And it yeah, also it's it came, uh, well, as I said, I'm interested from the festival and with with this program, what I do, I choose the books. I'm very careful. Me, I don't do it for a while until I find the right book or the right person to interview. Uh, my aim is like, uh, as I said, like when I was working in the festival, a lot of people come to me and say, okay, we don't know how to find the right book for the children. You go to the festival and you see like thousands of books and you cannot sit down and read all these books to find the right book for your children. So I try to find, you know, some books that add to the children. And it's basically uh, the interviews more, mainly for parents and for like teachers, for whoever work with children. So the books I found uh, sometimes uh, books or even write people who work with the children, uh, work in the children uh, field, you know, uh, so we, some of them I did interview that uh, about children with sickness, like with cancer or with autism or with these things and how uh, in the story they help uh, the parents to, to, to teach the children about this, you know, or, or understanding this part of it. And also with people who work with children about their, their mental mental thinking and the psychology and all these things so this means basically uh these are the interviews i do to help others to help uh, as i said to uh, parents or mm -hmm. to, to get to mm -hmm. the right information or to get the right books for the children if they especially if they want to teach them a certain uh, subject about certain things uh, and now there are so many books about these things which is great because Children need to learn about um, sicknesses, about all these other things that, you know, so they can understand the other child also with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's important to introduce books to children. Otherwise, they won't know. They, yeah. And also, like, mm -hmm. more interesting, like, especially with Arab countries, I inter interviewed this writer who writes about Palestine, which is now, you know, the subject... Okay. And she wrote a book, stories, and especially for young adults. And it's amazing stories because it tells the stories of the people. And, and that's that's interesting because other children, and her books are translated actually into other languages. Uh, and it, especially for Arab children also, even if you, you live in the Arab world, but you still don't understand what's happening. For children, definitely, they don't know. And that's how you bring the other issues also to them, to teach them about what's happening also. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And what has been the most rewarding thing in your career? Like wow. Because you're doing a lot of things. I'm doing a lot of things, yes. I think it's anything with literature, I love to do it. You know, I, I used to work in a corporate for a long time and was really my aim to work in the literature field, to be in that field. And I think, you know, I, I don't consider it as a work as much as something I enjoy. And that's, I think that's more rewarding from anything else because, mm -hmm. you know, um, Actually, in the festival, my job was to read a lot, which is really, you know, I enjoy it. And I still read a lot. And, and that's, I think that's very rewarding. I mean, it's, it's always, always rewarding to be in that field, to learn more, to be, it's part of my life. It's it's actually my life to, to go into these things. So it's nothing like, um, it's what I do is, is really a big part of my life, which is like all the reading, all the things I do is connected to the work I do. So it's, it's, it is in the whole rewarding. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. No, yeah, that is amazing. Which other languages do you like, or you plan to learn? Well, uh, well, actually, I, I have learned French for a long time. I mean, I studied in school, university, but I never used it. So I'm now practicing again and hopefully to go back to, to it uh, also again, because I learned it very well. I learned like the whole thing, grammar and everything. But, you know, when you don't use the language, it's just it's just. It just, I mean, it's there, but it just need practice again. So I started slowly now to go back to the French, but hopefully I want to go deep and go back to, you know, and just 
the grammar and the writing and all these things. Yeah, I'd love to go back because I mean, I feel like really bad. Mm -hmm. I lost it, mm -hmm. which is I really studied like for a long time, but then it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. It will be nice when you go back and enjoy that language. Yes, yeah. I mean, I mean, I understand words. I understand. I mean, mm -hmm. I can do like very right, like words. I can't remember now, but I I need I need when I read. Oh, I remember this word. I remember that, but it's just I don't know it anymore. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Which projects are you working on right now? What's on the plate? Uh, well, I've been working on something which really took a long time, and I'm hopefully finishing by the end of the year. Uh, I I do uh, translate short stories and do interviews for Arabic Literature and English blog, uh, mm -hmm. which is a famous blog now, right, basically on Arabic literature and translation. So we're working on um, and a project. We started a project on the blog, which is uh, translating or writing about books, uh, Iraqi books, uh, which talks about different ethnics, uh, because in Iraq we have so many ethnic groups. Uh, so we uh, translated books, or like part of a books or interviews about Kurdish, Assyrian, Armenian, um, you know, different kind of Muslims, different kind of Kurdish people. And now we're working on this project to put it in a, in a book and maybe also um, some stories uh, about you know uh, personalities about cities so we're still figuring out what we want to put in the book but my aim was actually the main aim was to write to introduce these ethnic groups through literature to the readers and that's what I wanted to continue in that in that part of it yes to write about because we have I think we have 39 kind of ethnic groups in in Iraq and uh, so many of them are very small and they, people don't know about it but the beauty is that it is now uh, writers are writing about them and I don't want it to put it in in a non-fiction way I wanted to bring it in a literature way you know in fiction way so people relate to it also more so basically, hopefully, this this will will mm -hmm. get going <laughs> and happening. Oh, wow! Yeah, that would be nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The scope so, is very big, I think, of this project. Yeah. Yes, it's it's a very big project, and also searching for that, you know, searching for these books is not easy, you know. Uh, and I found some books. We did, I think, until now we did eight uh, in the block. We did eight of them. Uh, so hopefully, we can find more and more about these uh, these books. Uh, I concentrate on Iraq literature because Iraq literature since two thousand three and now it changed totally. You know, two thousand three. Uh, writers were not able to write freely about what they want to write and now they're writing so basically these stories are everything is before 2003 you know and before the change in Iraq and that's oh, amazing yeah. because people don't know what's what's there before that time you know all these years I think from from the 60s to 2003, people don't know what's, what's happening in Iraq, what's the what's, uh, things that there. So now it's all going out. So that's, I think that's uh, that's what I wanted to people to know about. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So Hend, I have this question. Um, is Arabic different in different, different regions of uh, where it is spoken? Or is it the same? Yeah, I mean, very interesting question because people don't understand Arabic. It's a uh, language because we have the formal Arabic language, which is what you write in books. And we have the dialects and we have so many dialects. Each country has their own dialects, which is different. And sometimes even I don't understand some words in other you know, countries because they use it differently. And because you know that if you go to the background, we are like... Um, we are affected by other languages, like in Iraq and all these places, we have a lot of English interfere with that. And also some actually because of the um, the Gulf, some also Indian words and some Indian things because of the uh, the port uh, in the south and other places like they were affected by a French language. So the dialect is different, but the formal Arabic, what we write in it is the one, uh, one Arabic, which is uh, basically the, the the Quran, the Quran language and all these formal. So what we teach in the schools, what we write is a formal Arabic, which everyone can understand. But when you speak to people like day to day, 
it's different. Even now, there is um, as kind of there is why there is some books are uh, written in the dialect, you know, in Egypt and other places. Well, this is something that people also uh, very. Um, some of people are not happy about it. Some of people like really encouraging that. And I had interviewed one lady who writes in the Egyptian dialect, which has she has very interesting. Um, concept because she lives in New York and uh, she doesn't speak Arabic to her I mean she speaks in in Egyptian dialect to her children and she said if I teach them the former Arabic that's mean I'm teaching them a different language because it's so totally different so she wanted them I mean it's very difficult but she wanted them to learn her own country language and that she wrote the books in that languages so it's it is a struggling with arabic now especially with family lives in a foreign countries where they don't speak arabic and there's no uh, schools for arabic and now that's where it's it's going it's changing also it's really changing but still the former arabic the one that you teach and the one you write in it is the former arabic that everyone understand yeah i see okay yeah wow. Uh, interesting. Thank you for sharing. No, it, it is very interesting, and there is a lot of uh, you know discussion about wh what to write uh -huh. the what because even like if if someone write it in, in full Egyptian dialect, I would not be able mm -hmm. to read it fully. I would mm -hmm. struggle with some words, you know. But it's it has mm -hmm. a certain certain people only for a certain people. Yeah, I see. Okay, that was a great discussion, and. Thank no, thank you. I mean, you have great uh, questions also, and I hope uh, people will know more about the Arabic, especially Arabic literature, and understanding the difference and right. uh, translation also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it was lovely talking to you, and oh, thank you for joining my show. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having me in your show and uh, wish you all the success in your show. I mean, this is very, very interesting. And it's nice to know about uh, different languages, different, you know, mm -hmm. way of people working and to understanding that because, you know, some even translators have a different way of working, which is very, very, mm -hmm. you know, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining and you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining me in this conversation with Hen. See you in the next one. Bye-bye and have a nice day.